Hello, my name is Patrick Nieborg, and in this video I'm going to show you how microreference works inside Fear Studio. Before we uh, get into microreference, let's have a quick look at our regular roughness. We have a simple scene with some columns that increases distance to this uh, plane, which we have a mirror material applied. And uh, let's have a quick look how this looks like. And you see we have a crisp perfection with roughness zero. Now let's increase the roughness to something like five. And we can see that the first column is still quite crisp in the mirror. And the second one, which is a little bit more far away than the first one, already gets a little bit blurred. And you can see the blurriness increases the more far away the column is from the mirror. Until the last one here. So if we increase now the roughness even more, you can see that this effect gets stronger and stronger. You still can see the first one, but it's already a little bit blurry. It's not that crisp anymore. And if we go to 20, well, we can hardly see the third one. We will see the second one quite blurry, and the first one also very blurry. Until we go to 50, where we actually don't see any columns reflected anymore because the surface is so rough that it appears like a white surface. All the light gets scattered around and we cannot see any uh, crisp reflections. Now, let's have another look. We go back to a roughness of 5 and we are going to rotate columns so they are all more or less at the same distance to the plane something like that as we can see all the columns get reflected with the same blurriness because they are the same distance away from the mirror now let's rotate the scene a little bit to see it from a different angle and um, yeah, we get the same type of reflection, blurry. All of them have the same blurriness. So we can say that the blurriness depends on the distance from the reflective object. So closer to the object, it's less blurry, and more far away, it will get more blurred. Now, what have, has this to do with microreference? Uh, I'm going to show you some images, and uh, later we are going to talk about here the settings, how they work, and um, for what you can use them. This is a real photo, it's not a render. And this photo is showing us something new about reflection. Uh, if you have a look at the light sources, you see they are at equal distance to the wall. But the reflections on the wall don't have the same blurriness uh, across uh, the whole distance. The light source that's more far away actually is reflected quite crisp. And the one that is nearest to us is reflected very blurry. So, behind this is the microsurface structure. And um, we can think about the microsurface structure like hills and valleys. Um, the measurement is in micrometers, so it's very, very small. And depending on uh, how high the peaks are and the distribution, you will have or a smooth surface or a very rough surface. Now, if we imagine that the peaks have a little red dot and the valleys are blue, uh, you will see what happens if we look at them from this from different viewing angles. Straight on, you see more blue than red, but as soon as we change the viewing angle, you will see that the blue disappears and we see more 
red until we only see red. So this is exactly what's happening with uh, the reflections. And uh, let's see this um, inside Fear Studio, uh, how the settings affect the reflections and how we can reproduce this uh, kind of view-dependent reflection. So uh, here we are again in Fear Studio. And um, I recreated the photograph, uh, more or less. It was more to get the correct perspective so we can focus on the wall. There are a lot of details missing, but uh, for our purpose, which is this wall over here and this one, uh, it's enough. So actually, we don't need the whole scene. We only need the wall and the lights. So I'm going to turn off the layers we don't need. And um, let's start. You see, this is the image, the background image. Uh, and turn it off here. And uh, we also turn off the overlay mode. Yeah, let's see. Okay. So um, you can see everything is lined up correctly. And um, yeah, we see already the problem here. The slides. Uh, don't look like in the photo quite blurry. Um, if we disable visibility for a moment, we can compare and you see there's no way this belongs to this light source and it's quite crisp and it gets blurred away. Now, in our case, we all have the same amount of blurriness. So let's see if we can do something about it by reducing the roughness, let's say to five. Nope. If you look again, you see this part is very blurry. And now example, it's too crisp. Let's put it back 10. And even at 10, this part is not as blurry as it should be. So let's see if 20. Well, now this part is okay, maybe. Let's have a look. Uh, it could be. But you see, we are unable to get this crisp reflections of the light sources. Now, here is where we can enable micro roughness and we already see that something has changed this light source uh, this reflections here are starting to get much more crisp and we still get this blurred reflection over here by the way this value this roughness value will represent um, the roughness when you lo look at the object straight ahead it's like, uh, let's change camera for a moment. Maybe it's looking now at the wall, straight to the wall, and you see now the light sources have the same amount of blurriness, and it corresponds to the roughness value over here, in our case 20. Let's go back to our camera. Now, if we look, uh, we see that uh, it's we are not quite there. They all have to be much less blurry than we have it right now. So let's play with the settings. The height setting is the one that has the most influence of uh, how the reflection will appear. So if we increase this, you see it's getting more blurred. So we have to go the other way around. Let's set this to maybe 150. And OK. We see that the first light source is getting quite crisp. Second one, let's compare it again. Well, I think we have to reduce it a little bit more. Let's see if we go to 100. Well, 100 seems to be. To be a little bit too much. Because if we compare again, yeah, this one 
has to be much more blurred. So we can say probably let's say thirty. Twenty. Yeah, this could be. Let's have a look again. Mm -hmm. We could go with now. The width also has an impact, but it's not so obvious. Um, when we are working with uh, very rough surfaces, videos, let's say 50 or 40, um, I, I better show you how it affects on this example here. If we reduce this value, let's say to something quite small, smaller. We can see that, you know, the shape is getting more crisp on the tips. Let's put this back again to a higher value. You can see that it's rounded over here and here. But if we use a lower value, we get the crisp reflection here. And if we lower it even more, say 0 0.20, you can see even here we get this more defined reflection of the light sources. But uh, looking at our example, it's not very defined here, also not here. So I think uh, we can leave it. At the default, but uh, there's something more. Walls normally are not perfectly straight. They have some wobbles. Some uh, it's, the reality is never perfect. So if we look again, we see that there's some unevenness. And uh, we can mimic this with a bump map. So I have here a bump map. And let's drop it in. Well, it's way too much. OK, this looks better. But probably we can reduce it even a little bit more. We could probably also go inside the texture and play with the contrast, the, the offset. But I think um, we're getting the effect. Compare it again. Yeah, it's looking closely. But there's something more. It looks like, you can see it also over here, we have one reflection and then we have like a, a blurry one around it. You can see this on all of them except on this one, which seems like a big blurry reflection. Now, this is like a double reflection, and we can reproduce this quite easy just by copying. Now let's first enable our material again, invisibility. And we are going to copy the material and paste it. Now. What I like to do, this is just a static thing, is to put one above and then use the weights. In this case, I will put it to 50, which in fact would be exactly the same like uh, having it side by side. It's just uh, I prefer to have it on top, um, but uh, you can use it side by side, no problem. Now, we are going to say that. Bottom one, we are going to disable reference. And now suddenly we have this secondary blurred reflection. And with benefit that we can even lower 
the amount of the crisp ones. And you see now we're getting quite close to what it looks like over here. Okay, so now even we have uh, set up two materials. Uh, if we go out to the camera view, to the top view, straight on, you see that the reflection is exactly roughness 20. It would be exactly the same without having this one on top, because this is how it works. So now if we can zoom out a little bit. Now I will disable now the background image, we don't need it. And we are just going to focus, see, all the light sources reflect the same blurriness because we are looking straight into the wall. Now we are going to rotate to have a shallow view and suddenly the light sources appear to um, appear reflected very crisp. So that's it. Um, I will go back to the camera view and I'm going to enable all of my layers so I have the whole scene. Environment map. That's one two. And we go can go to the dark room and make our render. Okay, let's compare the final render with uh, our photo. And um, well, that's not the final render. <laughs> There's a lot of work to do still. I have to add some details. And I also only used plain colors. I didn't use any texture except for the bump map on the walls. So now it's time to add blood maps, roughness maps, to introduce this imperfection that um, is so characteristic of reality. Uh, also for the walls you can see that on the photo, on the second uh, reflection of the light source, there seems to be some... Uh, it's not that even, this part, so I would introduce this also on the geometry level, on the model. And, um, well, you can also see some dirt over here and there. All this will add to the final realism. You can see it on the ceiling that some panels are not lined up perfectly. So, yes. Uh, now, finally, about uh, micro roughness. Um, you don't see it on all objects because it really depends on the viewing angle, and on some materials, you have to have a very, very shallow viewing angle to see um, the variation in reflection. So, the best thing you can do is actually take a photo straight on to get the general roughness of the material, and then take some more photos from varying viewing angle until you see. Uh, the variation in uh, reflection. Uh, you can see uh, this kind of phenomena also on uh, very rough materials like concrete, but uh, if you want to have a small sample, you won't see it, you won't see it because uh, the structure don't have enough to show this effect. So, but if you see it on on a long floor, then you will have enough of um, microstructure that can build up this effect. I'm going to show you now some other photos uh, where you can see this effect. For example, here on um, a painted wall. Another one um, on a table. So, really, uh, you have to uh, look for it. And uh, once you got it, you will be able to recreate this in fear. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And I'll see you the next time. Bye bye.